What up, what up, that's them, his squad, and welcome back, guys. Here's your boy, Sean. And your girl, Mel. Yes. Welcome, s and squad. We're back in the building. We are back. How are you guys feeling today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys, hey, if you're having a rough day, let's turn around. Good energy plus some good content, all, all right? right? So, my lovely wife, what do we have today, baby? All we right, got? babe, today we'll be reacting to Diddy has tapes on everyone. Whoa, Candace Nelly. Owens versus Mark Lamont Hill. Okay, so I know Candace Owens, but show. Mark Pierce Lamont Morgan Hill. Interview. I don't know who that is. Wow. So let me see what this guy. I has know to say. who he is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Once you see him, you'll remember. All right. Okay. So guys, before we get into it, smash that like button, turn on all notifications. Let's go ahead and dive into the video. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Let's see what we got. I know this is going to be good. Behind the scenes, everyone knew that this is what he was engaged in. This was an open secret in Hollywood. Did you know about Diddy Pierce? No, I didn't. No. We really are just okay, getting know to know the beginning okay. of everything. People at the upper echelons of society and politics knew about this and they were okay with it. I said there's a race piece to this. And people, by virtue of being black, are asked to denounce Diddy because they're supposed to be representing blackness in the black community. More it's amazing, Mark, that you always I, see a I'm race not, angle I'm here. For, I'm, I'm rejecting the narrative that I've introduced race into this conversation. The conversation you literally about said race, you wanted to bring uh, race up. You did. I didn't say random you white people. In, I didn't say random white people. Okay. I said, I said, I said white people in Hollywood. To me, it feels like they're both wearing Whoa, Nelly. I can't sort through all of Kamala's various accents. There's so many of them. She's in front of a Latina crowd. Suddenly she's Selena, you know, and she's speaking like a Latina. You know, I, I, I can't deal with it. it. As a black person, you should vote for the person that uplifts the black community. That's her. How does she disrespect you? By placating to me, by giving me uh, word salads and all kind of nonsense, acting like she doesn't ha have to answer questions, being the artful dodger. And if she wants to get down, act like she's black, well... Whoa, Whoa. The next US president will either be an accomplished state right. prosecutor and senator or a billionaire real estate mogul who served four years in the Oval Office. At least that's how I and many other people see it. But the laws of identity politics, this is actually a contest between a mixed race woman and a very privileged white man who's intrinsically racist. And race has inevitably become a lightning rod in this election. Sweet Kamala Harris said that she's open to taxpayer funded reparations for slavery. She also unveiled an opportunity agenda for black men, which included legalizing weed and offering one million forgivable loans to black business owners. Most black voters will support it, nobody doubts that, which is on track to win a much smaller share of black voters than Joe Biden did in 2020. Donald Trump, meanwhile, is on course to make substantial gains amongst black voters. Mm. In a little while, we'll debate why that is. But first, we're going to focus on P. Diddy, whose scandal deepens daily already facing federal charges, including sex trafficking and racketeering. Sean Combs has been hit with a slew of new civil lawsuits, accusing him of sexual assault against six victims, one of them a 16-year-old boy. Well, to debate this, I'm joined by the host wow, of the Candace Pope podcast, oh. Candace Owens, and the host of Bet News and Upfront and Now Zero, Professor Mark Lamont Hill. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Candace, good to have you back on Uncensored. P. Diddy, uh, this seems like every day the scandal gets bigger and worse for him. Yes, it does. Yeah, it certainly does. And I'm not surprised whatsoever. I mean, I think I was on your show before he got arrested and I, I, I brought up what was going on with him and because I had read through the lawsuit and it was just one of those things that was unavoidable because there was so much evidence. I mean, there was picture documentation, there was video documentation. And I also want to be clear that the, the press and the media and the public at large is is shocked by what's happening but we really are just getting to the beginning of everything mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who have been named that have not been brought to heel people that were above him music executives and none of this is shocking really i think you know yesterday a, a report came out that showed that faith in the mainstream media is at an all-time low right i think something like uh, 65 percent of americans no longer trust the mainstream media the Diddy case is a perfect example as to why that is. You know, you, you have people that spent so much time defending this man. This man was allowed to be with every presidential candidate. He was allowed to throw parties. He was hailed as a hero. And yet behind the scenes, uh, everyone knew that this is what he was engaged in. This was an open secret in Hollywood. In fact, when Kanye last year said that he was a Fed and started speaking about some of these allegations, he was simply dismissed as crazy. People at the upper echelons really? of society and politics knew about this and they were okay with it fundamentally 
mostly be because he was acting a part. I very much believe what Kanye alleged that he was acting a part like Jeffrey Epstein in which he was collecting blackmail um, over various people that were in Hollywood. And so, like I said, we're at the beginning. We're scratching the surface of this scandal. There are some more big Ooh. names um, that are going to have to answer for it. And I think also the silence of certain individuals like LeBron James is quite deafening. A person who uh, claims to care so much about black life, you know, black lives matter on the ground, taking a kneel. OK, that's fine. But now you have a friend of yours who has been on camera beating a black woman. OK, you said nothing when that happened. You also know that you have various black people speaking out about how they were abused by him and you have said nothing. So I, I don't like the hypocrisy behind that. Yeah, I think it's a good point. I mean, Mark, okay, this... there are lots of big names being dragged into this. We don't know where the truth lies with that yet. But certainly people like LeBron have been deafening with their silence for the reasons that Candice just articulated. Uh, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Epstein in, in relation to all the apparent taping of videos and pictures and stuff that was allegedly going on. And we'll see what, what that plays out like in a courtroom. Uh, but it also reminds me of Harvey Weinstein in the sense that there you had somebody you know, in the movie industry, as big as P. Diddy, well, I think the most Oscar-nominated person yeah, in the masters. history as a producer in Hollywood, uh, where everyone must have known something about him, right? I mean, I knew that Harvey was a pretty bad bully and all the rest of it. Uh, and it must have been more than an open secret amongst a lot of those celebrities and Hollywood crowd. Did you know about Diddy, Pierce? No, I didn't, no. No, but I, <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I only met, no, I met did, Diddy. Did, did, I mean, I'll tell you, I met Diddy a couple of times. I mean, here's what I was... The point, the analogy I'm going to make is, I met Diddy twice for about 10 minutes. Um, Harvey, I knew a lot better, and I knew an uns there was an unsavory side to him. I didn't know about all the rape stuff that then emerged, but I do believe there must have been a lot of people who did know that stuff, who were around Harvey Weinstein at a close enough level to know that. And I certainly believe with P. Diddy that there were a lot of people that were going to these freak-off freak parties and so on who must have known for many, many years that all this stuff was going on. Oh, That's yeah. the parallel I'm drawing. No, I understand the parallel you're drawing. The idea that, that I'm disputing is just the idea that everyone knew. Or that no, no, I, yeah, I don't mean everybody. everyone. Who I mean, look, I just think a lot of people no, I, must I, have known. Most of course, definitely. of course. We're, we're not in disagreement about a few things. Yeah, First... We're not going to be oblivious. Uh, Everything that Diddy has been accused of is despicable and indefensible. And I hope that he is held accountable in all the ways that are fair and just and reasonable. There are, I mean, who knows how many victims? You know, there are lots of allegations. Uh, I have no doubt that lots of the allegations are true. And, and as Candace said, I have no doubt that lots of people have known for a long time. Uh, and there are lots of reasons why people didn't come forward. Some of it is good old fashioned uh, you know, Hollywood culture, which is people are getting exploited, people are getting hurt, people are getting harmed. Uh, but as long as it's the old boys network, we don't care. And Diddy mm -hmm. became one of the old boys network. The old boys network isn't just old white men. It also includes powerful, rich black men. Uh, not in the same way, but certainly uh, people like Diddy are in that mix. I, I don't mm -hmm. disagree with that. I'm very uncomfortable throwing LeBron James's name out there as someone uh, who knew something or, or, or has some well, no, I think, uh, conspiratorial well, to be fair, yeah, but on that, I feel like Candice was quite that. careful how she worded that. She didn't she say, didn't he, say knew that he knew She just said he's been deafening by a silence, which he has. Right. He's been very he vocal for black about women. a lot of other issues involving yeah. the black community in America. Why is he so silent? Just sure. because it happens to be somebody he used to party with. It's just interesting. It, it is interesting, I, but I, I, I want to caution the audience not to jump to any conclusions about why LeBron hasn't. Again, let me be very clear. LeBron should speak out about this because something awful happened, and he has a duty. I think all public figures have mm. a duty to speak out against awful, morally atrocious things that happen. I just don't want to leap to a conclusion. I'm not saying Candace did. I'm not saying you did. But I don't want to leap to a conclusion um, that, that there's some other sort of... Uh, reason why why he may have done this the, the other thing here is i just remember no, on that i just remember no, 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 I, well, I, 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 need, I need i just need you, I just need you to hear i just need, okay yeah go, go, on. go ahead Piers, i'm sorry well the point oh, i was gonna yeah. make just on the point you uh, made all i was gonna say is sorry, <laughs> all right okay this let is me, a little let me, get, let me go off. first um, let me go what, first what, what, the point i was gonna make uh, about the you point, go first you go first. you just made a really good point which i want to make a point of which is i think that the point i would make was when harvey weinstein went down there was an absolute stampede of celebrities in Hollywood
who rushed to distance themselves and publicly denounce him. And wow. I've just noticed that with P. Diddy, there's been a very, very, very small number of high profile black celebrities, including sports stars, entertainers and so on, who have chosen to do that yet. So there's a marked difference between the way these two scandals have played out in terms of how many high profile people are prepared to go, this is disgusting. Well, I, I think there's another thing here, right? Harvey Weinstein was a predator full stop, right? Diddy is, based on the evidence, a predator full stop and some other stuff. And mm. there are a lot of people based on what I know, what I know, people I've spoken to, the stories I've heard and the rumors I've heard for 20 years now about Diddy that aren't always about predation. And, and that's the complicated thing here, right? A lot of the, well, the why details, does that make it complicated? a lot of the gossip, a lot of the nastiness... I, I, you, you'll, just hear me out, you'll understand. Okay. The, the thing is, a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of the subtext around Diddy isn't about predation, it's around sexuality. And so a lot of people aren't aren't really outraged, especially in the hip-hop community, that Diddy uh, was preying on underage girls, allegedly, or that he's beating up Cassie, allegedly. Some people are just weirded out that he may have been having sex with dudes. And so there's a, there's a, there's a multiple things happening here. And so a lot of the people in Hollywood who are being quiet on Diddy, they're not being quiet because they knew he was doing something illegal. Some of them are quiet because they were at the parties, they were at the freak-offs doing freaky stuff. And the freaky stuff isn't illegal, right. but it can ruin your career in a society Candace that's homophobic. So I'm saying it's a lot of things mixed in. Okay, Candice, you're raising your hand. I think I know why, but go ahead. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you in some ways. Uh, what I would just add is it's without question because they did not know that he was reporting them. I mean, when I read through that lawsuit, uh, uh, Rodney made it very clear that he had hidden cameras. And if you are a person like LeBron who says, ain't no party like a Diddy party, you've got Ashton Kutcher talking about what happens at Diddy party stays at Diddy parties. And so finally you learn via the press that actually uh, Diddy has been collecting evidence on all of you and you don't know where those tapes are. That will buy your silence for quite some time because you're hoping that if you keep your head low, you're not going to be revealed as one of these people that was engaged in some of these acts, whether they were heterosexual or homosexual, it doesn't matter. And maybe you're just cheating on your wife and you don't want that to get out into the public. Maybe wow. you were, as Cat Williams described it, in one of the rooms. He said you could just walk around the house. He said this on stage years ago. That you could walk around the house and you would see people engaged in various sex acts. And again, Cat Williams was someone who was dismissed as crazy and dismissed as a drug addict. And it turned out that or it seems that if these allegations are proven to be true, and I believe they are, um, then he was telling the truth. And I think that is the reason that so many of them are silent, because they were doing things. They thought that he, they were his friend, that they were bad boys for life, and that he would keep things silent, mm. when in reality he was just another Jeffrey and Epstein-typed character, and they're, they're scared for their lives. Yeah. Especially Definitely. if you're someone like a LeBron James, and I'm not alleging that he is caught in something no. terrible, but if... Let's, let's stop it right there for a minute. I think she is absolute correct. I love the way she just absolutely and the way she just correct. explains herself because she makes it so clear. Um, these people don't want to be involved in this, and they know they for are fact scared that they're on tape. They know that <laughs> you know they know they're they were tape. involved in the sexual activities. They were drunk, high. They don't, yes. and some of them don't remember what they did. They don't even remember. Think like, about oh, it. Like I know I was at a, a Diddy party, but I don't so know. So that when is this why is. there's so much silence. People they're, are disappearing. They are quiet. They're no one quiet. is speaking up. No they're one is trying to go get lawyers to be ready. Most definitely um, for whatever comes their way. Yeah. Um, and they, they, they just. They frightened. are scared. They're frightened. Here we go, guys. This, this is a good interview. Here we go. If he was caught in anything and you're LeBron James and you've made your mark on talking about the ills of society and you, you know, have minted yourself a king and you're speaking out on the black community and they find out you're the room over uh, while someone's getting raped, potentially, mm. not going to look good. Well, I, I just At think all. that we don't know, as you say, where the truth lies. Wow. With this, and we're not inferring anything against LeBron or Ashton Kutcher or anybody else. Correct. You know, I, I had Jaguar Wright on who made a number of allegations against Beyonce and Jay-Z, which we were not able to independently substantiate, which were vigorously which it was ridiculous that they sent you a cease and desist. Just well, well, they that. they, I, I they just, just said they the just said these that. allegations are completely. They sent you a cease and desist. Well, no, I'll tell you what but they, they sent me. It wasn't, sent you actually, cease and actually, it wasn't even that. Now, what they, no, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. They just said, look, these allegations are did, completely untrue. Did you hear what Candace just said? And we will. What the Candace, Candace said. said they should have sent the cease and desist to Jaguar, right? Not to Pierce. 
Pierce was just there holding the interview. Jaguar well, was the one who had all the information. Well, he got the biggest platform. I, I understand that, but why not send it to the one who is spilling all the beans? Could she? Could Jaguar be telling the truth? You got a point there. Um, Candace wow. is a very smart woman. Here we go. We'll sue you if you don't take them down. We had no way of independently verifying anything she said in relation to Jay-Z mm. and Beyonce. Now, you know, who knows where this scandal goes or where or what names get dragged in and in what way. But what it's taught me is you just have to be careful when a story like this breaks that when we put big names into the scandal, you just don't infer they've done anything wrong yet. The only thing we can say which is, I think, pertinent to this comes back to what we said at the start. When people who are as normally vocal as LeBron, who can mm -hmm. be as condemnatory as he's been publicly about all manner of issues, when they're completely silent about something as big as this, and you know they were good friends with P. Diddy and were at the parties and so on, you just raise an eyebrow, right? And, and you would about everybody. Mm -hmm. And it may well be, what, as Candice says, Mark, it might be a sense of unknown, not knowing what's on tape here, not wanting to get involved at all. I totally understand it. But I do remember by marked contrast the number of people in the Weinstein scandal who raced to publicly disown him. And interestingly, with Epstein, that didn't happen with him because he also had a lot because, of tapes. Because yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting point, Piers. But I mean, again, Diddy is very interesting in that for the last 30, year, he, 30 years, he has taken pictures and partied mm -hmm. and hung out with everyone. Yes, he's hung out with politicians, but I guarantee you a lot of them politicians, I ain't saying all of them, mm -hmm. but a lot of them politicians had no idea what was going on behind the scenes. When you mm -hmm. go to a Diddy party, there's levels to the Diddy party. Yes. There's the Diddy party at the club. There's the Diddy party at his house. Then there's the after party. Then there's the after after party, right? Wow. I, mean, I haven't been to any of those after parties or after after parties or, you know what I mean, or any of those parties. <laughs> but have so you been I'm, to I'm, the I'm Diddy party? Speaking as so a how do you know about these parties? And as a journalist, I'm saying... Um, he knows a lot, right? So there are lots of people who go to the Diddy parties that don't know any of that. But if you find out that all these awful things happen at Diddy parties at 4 a.m., it's hard to go to the media and say, yo... I was at the Diddy party, right. but I left at 12. I was in the Hamptons, but I didn't go to the, the, mm. the next location. And so I think a lot of it is fear of public relations. And I think to Candace's point, I don't think it's a coincidence that Diddy has all these strategic alliances with every single person in Hollywood, black mm. or white. And I think Harvey Weinstein didn't have those types of relationships. So it was much easier for people to run from from him. You know, the kind of, you know, the kind of, again, yeah, you know, the kind of hypocrisy, though, uh, Candice, which really gets my go with this. Take somebody like John Legend, right, who decided to rewrite the lyrics to Baby It's Cold Outside because it endorsed sexual uh, misconduct, which obviously was completely preposterous. It's one of the most innocent, flirtatious videos ever made back in the 60s about a beautiful love song. And really? it was completely misappropriated by, by no! Legend. <laughs> it was rapey. Knock it off. It's not rapey at <laughs> all. Rapey? Baby, it's cold. Oh, Do you want to come in for a drink? It's cold outside. Do me a favor. And anyway, uh, and, and even and if you... keep saying no and he keeps trying to get inside. Oh, it was, it was on, harmless flirtation. <laughs> We completely misconstrued deliberately by John Legend to tick all the right virtue signaling boxes. But here's my point. What has John Legend would, would said you about that in court? What has John Legend said about P. Diddy? He was enraged Absolutely by a 1950s nothing. video of harmless flirtation. So Double much so he rewrote the here. lyrics, Candace. Mm. But he's not enraged enough by what he's reading about P. Diddy, someone he knows well, to make any comment that I've seen so wow. far. Wow. Right. That's ex and that is the reason why people can't stand the Hollywood types, and rightfully so. I mean, wow. John Legend has always been a walking contradiction. He speaks often, oh, yes, the bullying of this cute Christmas song that everybody loves, and I'm still going to play the original lyrics forever. Mm -hmm. uh, but his wife is sliding into the DMs notoriously of teenagers and telling them they should kill themselves and offering like this small apology. Like, I'm really going to take some time off and think about this. So you, you married a bully. Whoa. You are, have been at so many parties, friends with these people. You constantly purport that you're fighting for social justice on every cause. Like I said, the real litmus test was the video, which Diddy owned. That was him beating Cassie on tape, okay? So forget if you're like, you want to play the card of, well, it's, it's innocent until proven guilty. I know people are making all these allegations, but I'm going to wait. Where were you on the topic of Cassie being beat to a pulp on camera and Diddy offering can, can this little meandering apology? No, I would just like oh, to sorry, finish, if you don't mind. Up. You're allowed to, we're 
well, don't seem like there's, there doesn't seem like there's a buzzer here. So I think I can finish my thought. Um, but, you know, and that's what has become so problematic is they are constantly virtuing signaling to the public about how great they are because they're not voting for Donald Trump. Mm. Donald Trump's such an awful person because uh, he may be cheated on his wife 16, 20, 30 years ago, whatever it is. And they just cannot muster that same energy when they are looking at proof, which somebody comes out and says has to take full accountability. I did beat her. That's me. Yeah, it's ridiculous. OK, Mark. So, so, here, so here's oh, my definitely. response, and I, wow. and I didn't mean to interrupt you, Candace. Again, there's a sound delay. I did. I thought you would pause. That I wasn't trying to be rude. Forgive me. Um, we're saying that John Legend didn't respond to uh, to Cassie or to the Diddy parties, and we're saying this as if it's true, but it's it's not true. And so I just I, I just want to read to you what John Legend actually said in response to this, and he said it months and months ago. He said, "I was horrified by the descriptions that I read before the video evidence came out," meaning he believed Cassie even before the video. He then said, "And absolutely, it's something that needs to be brought to light when it happens." He said, "My default stance is to believe women when they make these accusations, and to make sure that we do whatever we can to support women." He also said that he was specifically horrified of this and then he said regarding to the other diddy stuff he said what he's accused of is shameful and he said all the other victims that have alleged that he's abused them it's, it's quite a shame for them too i really just want accountability and healing so i think this is an opportunity for us to say this is why we shouldn't jump to judgment we're on national international television castigating john legend for not doing the very thing that he actually did then all i had to do was type john legend diddy and it came up first so this, you guys owe john legend an apology if you don't edit this yeah okay so wow. here's what i'm saying about. That it's right that you've pointed that right out. Right now. My understanding is that that were comments you made back in May, not since we've had the raft of charges against Diddy, which is what I'm talking about. So there's been nothing. It's been a, a deafening wall of silence since the charges. That's what I'm talking about. We were just talking about Cassie. I we did specifically not just said he didn't say anything about no, Cassie. No, no. I think, look, Candice was talking about Cassie. He clearly did make a statement in referring to that, and that should be acknowledged. <laughs> so that's whatever, I, actually, I actually did not see the statement that he made about Cassie no. and read it in its entirety. So if I if I missed that, I'm, I'm more than happy to own it. I did not see him make a statement. And, and typically when he makes a statement, it's everywhere. So I guess they just hadn't picked up on what he said about Cassie, and yeah. he did great. I'm glad that he's one person in Hollywood who said something, because that was the most troubling for me mm. with LeBron James. I'm like, we actually have video evidence of this. Like, everybody should be saying something about this if you purport mm. to care about women and him and Chrissy Teigen are typically very loud on topic his wife especially mm. um so if I missed that and he said something about Cassie good for John Legend that makes he he and I are on the exact same side on that but it, it's not enough that it's just John Legend like there needs to be a lot more people in Hollywood that are speaking out about what's happening they're quiet let, let me ask you uh There's Mark, because they are in those chains I was literally about That's to ask why you about they're that. Quiet. So, you go ahead, Mark, go on. <laughs> they are on those tapes. Because it's, it's really fascinating here, right? So we're saying Diddy does this awful thing. Again, Diddy, despicable, monster, no defense of Diddy. We're asking all, all the prominent black people to speak out against it, right? But there is never a call for white people to denounce the, like, no one says everybody who ever met, every white guy who's ever met Harvey Weinstein yes, there was. needs to say something. Yes, or, there was. Or, 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 of course or, there was. No, no, no. Literally oh, everyone Pierce. who ever worked with him was asked Pierce, to Pierce. condemn it. And most of them rushed to do it. Pierce, 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 I want you to listen to what I said again, because you just disagree with the point I did not make. I didn't say that everyone in Hollywood was not challenged to, to address Weinstein. I said there's a race piece to this. And people, by virtue of being black, are asked to denounce Diddy because they're supposed to be representing blackness in the black community. No, no, I'm saying no, that no, white no, people, no, by no, virtue no, of no, their no, whiteness. No, no, no. no, no. Hang no, on. No, no, no. That, that's no. exactly what Candace... No, I no, said... No, you, I on, said that's hang exactly on. what Candace just said. Oh, I said... No, Mark. Oh. Candace, not you. I'm not saying every black person okay. has to comment on it because they're black. I'm saying I've been struck I, by the fact there is a massively smaller number of high-profile black celebrities who have spoken out comparative to what happened when Weinstein went down. So you're right that there is a race element to this, but it's the reverse but one. People, hang on, why, hang why on. Black people hang more, on, why, hang on. Let me finish. It's the reverse point to the one you're making. It actually is skewed against the white guy. He got more of a lambasting from celebrities than the black guy who's done arguably worse stuff. 
I wish I had the same race thought. It's amazing, Mark, that you always see a race angle here. The reason why I specifically called out LeBron James and these types is because they themselves are wearing the same race goggles. They purport to be the superheroes in the black community that every time there's some sort of a social injustice playing out against a black victim, they use their platforms to speak out about it because they say, oh, it's so unfair that black people are not being believed. It's so unfair. Hashtag George Floyd. Hashtag this person. So if you are going to assert yourself as a leader when black people make claims before they're proven in court this might be a good time to do it when you have a man who had so much power in hollywood and you just have an onslaught of black artists coming out saying that they were victimized by him it might be a good time to use your platform i'm calling out the hypocrisy and the double Most standard definitely. of that if lebron james had kept his mouth shut on every other issue and said nothing i wouldn't be like hey why is lebron james being quiet on this issue i'd I say he doesn't that. typically weigh in on anything that. so it wouldn't make sense to put pressure on him to do it. That would be the scenario in which what you are saying would make sense. It's the exact opposite. I'm saying keep the exact same energy that you have had on every other black issue when it comes to your door and it pertains to a friend of yours that you were partying with. I think that's pretty sensible. Because yeah. how would we um, be able to trust okay. him? I respect that. At any time if he's not willing to do it at a time like this. Yeah. Like I mean, because this is big. Why not use your platform to use speak on platform. it? Use your platform. You speak about it. I don't care if you pray else. about it. If you just give your opinion, say something. Unless he's on those tapes. Mm, unless you might be on the tapes and you don't want mm, people to find out. Your fan wow. base, your fans, your they wife, about your it. children. Why would they? Why? Why is everyone so quiet? They should speak out. They now can't. I, 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 How can you speak out if you know you are on those tapes? That's the thing. So, it's basically telling me that, you know, LeBron is on the tapes and he might be involved. I mean, it's Point allegedly. Point. It's, it's scary. Because but it's if like, that's your man and ain't, ain't no party like a ditty party, you need to be speaking out. Because unless once you speak out, a lot of people will, will hear you. Especially... With the platform that he has, people are waiting. I it's mean, huge. for years we have watched them, you know, party together and saw the friendship and, you know, Everything. clear your name, basically. Once He's tied you in. Out, you'll, He's tied in. You know, but it's like they're making me, you know, with the silence. It's, right. The silence is like. The silence is speaking it's like for being itself. Guilty. It's like, oh, like, we can't speak because. Our lawyers are telling us right. not to speak on this issue right. because we could be on those tapes. And you could, you know, you know, incriminate yourself. Here we go, guys. Let's keep going. Mark, okay. let, where is just? Mm. Do you mind if I respond to that? Sure. Because I, 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 I just I, there are three points that were made that I'd like to respond to. First thing is, I'm I'm rejecting the narrative that I've introduced race into this conversation. The conversation you became literally about said race, you wanted to bring uh, race up. You did. You literally <laughs> said I right, want to bring I'm race gonna, up. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to ask you to allow me to finish a sentence uninterrupted the way you have Candace. Then you can hear why you're actually not correct. Hear what I'm saying. When I said I want to bring race into this, it was in response to the point that Candace had made five minutes prior. When you watch this on TV, y'all, or on YouTube, rewind it and you'll see this. When she said LeBron James has spoken out for the black community, right? And, and, and historically, but isn't saying anything here. Mm. That was the first time that race was mentioned. My invocation of race was in response to that. And as you conceded just a moment ago, when you disagreed with me, you were saying that you weren't asking all, you, you, you were saying that there's a relatively lower response from the black mm. community uh, on this issue than prior issues. Not black so my, community, again, my don't invocation of race, what, Not black community, high okay. profile celebrities. Black celebrities, fair, fair enough, fair enough. It's a, but, very, but, 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 it's but a much smaller part of the is, community. Uh, I agree with you, but the fundamental point here is when I said I'm introducing race, it was to respond to a claim that was already race, racialized around LeBron James five to ten minutes prior. Mm. Now, to actually address the issue that I was responding to because I didn't introduce race into the conversation, the idea here for me is when Harvey Weinstein does something, Hollywood has to respond. When Diddy does something, black people have to respond. Now, I happen to believe that as a black person with a public platform, an athlete, an actress, or a, a journalist, That's not we what should he respond said. to the Diddy thing. I don't think that we should ignore our so responsibility what are you complaining black about? I'm okay, but uh -oh. my, my, my complaint is, is that uh -oh, when, we, when black people don't do it, <laughs> We have a we are cr criticized differently than when the white guy doesn't. I don't, do it. So hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Mark, I'm so, sorry, so, but so, the so idea, people, so, so the oh, idea that people were running around asking random white people in the street about Harvey Weinstein is ridiculous. They're not doing it. I didn't say with, that. And they're not doing it with random black that. people in the street either. I didn't say that. I'm talking. That's a straw man. That I'm is a talking, straw man. That no, is not. a straw man. The straw man, man argument is you. No, no, you are conflating. I didn't say random white people. You are I didn't say random white people in the street. I said, I said white people in Hollywood. No, you didn't. I said white people in Hollywood. You said white people on the street. I understand, but I'm deliberately. I'm conflating two things. I'm, 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 I'm conflating high-profile black celebrities and high-profile white celebrities and how they responded to Weinstein and to Diddy. And it's been very different. The volume of, of right. white celebrities who denounced Weinstein is, was far higher is, than it's been with Diddy. And my response to that Ooh. is, when a Weinstein happens, pe people didn't say, hey, where are the high-profile white Hollywood celebrities. What they said is, where are the high-profile celebrities? Where are the Hollywood types? They were asking Will Smith as much as they were asking Heidi Klum. When it comes to Diddy, they're only asking for black people. Well, hang on. Candace, hang on. Again, Mark. It, Mark. Hang on. I didn't finish Mark. the sentence yet. Really? Let me finish the sentence before you disagree you're, with you're, it. You're wrong. Pierce. Candace literally mentioned Ashton Pierce. Kutcher, <laughs> who last time I checked is a white guy. I didn't mention Ashton Kutcher. Ashton I Kutcher. Yes, she did. I... Yes, Mike, did. Okay, He's white. again, I want you yes, to hear what did. I'm actually saying. And not, <laughs> I want you to actually hear what I'm saying and, dis and disagree with what I'm saying and not what I'm not saying. The conversation about Harvey Weinstein, and I challenge you to show me any piece of evidence mm. where you called out and said, hey, I'd love to hear from some high-profile white celebrities. You've never said white. You just said high-profile celebrities. Maybe to you, Hollywood just means white. But in oh, general, no. the idea here for, 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 for Weinstein was we want his peers to speak out. We want his peers to say something. We want white people, mm. black people, who are, we just want his peers to say something. But when black people don't do it, it is framed as some kind of fail, some kind of specific or, or, or unique moral failure. And that's the idea that I'm challenging here. Again, I want everybody to speak out against both of those monsters. Okay. But I'm saying let's the, the, the not slight treat flaw, one okay, but Mark, than the Mark, other. With respect, the slight mind, floor is that Candice, mind, I just would Candice like actually said LeBron and Ashton Kutcher. I don't understand where it's not supposed to be no leniency anywhere. First of all, Mark is completely out of control. I think he is. I think he's Do getting. Do you see I think he's the anger in this guy? Black and the white. Like he is like, ups like he can't even hold his composure. Yeah. He and is like belligerent. It's almost like he's upset because they're making it like a black and white thing. But a no, monster is a monster. Mark Monsters is making it a no black colors. and white thing. No one else mentioned race. He's a, he's making it a black and white thing, and his, then he's trying to deflect and says that he's not making it a black and white thing. Wow. I don't think he knows what he's talking about at all. And wow, Mark, Candace um, is crushing him really in this interview. This one, and look at Candace just sitting back laughing she's at him. She's cool and just calm. Yeah, he can't even hold his. But he's like he's under pressure right now, and like he he's is just bus. a ball of anger. Here we go, guys. Here we is go. he on the Diddy tape? As well, <laughs> he might be. Goodness. <laughs> and last time I checked, Ashton because Kutcher, and peers. this may not be the case, but I believe he still identifies as a white guy. Last I checked, you're not Candace Owens. Last Ooh. I checked, you're not Candace Owens. I'm criticizing you right now, Pierce, not Candace Owens. So you can't say, well, Candace said it. Y'all aren't, y'all aren't, y'all are not a buddy comedy here. I'm critiquing your approach and coverage of this conversation. Right. And you can't say, well, Candace said it. I didn't disagree with Candace. I disagree with you on that particular point. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a little bit. They're laughing at him. Well, oh, Candace said it. You can't say. Candace? I don't think you could say I would like to introduce race and then 30 seconds later say I did not introduce race. I mean, the records will show you definitely introduced race. And he I did. brought up LeBron James and for a very specific reason, because he was quite literally at the parties and because he's used his platform to speak out on black victimization, not because he was black. That. I was pointing out the astounding hypocrisy. I didn't say, let's talk about LeBron James because he's a black man. I mean, I would have brought up tons of other black people and said, where are their voices? But it wouldn't have made sense because they don't hang out with him and they don't use their platforms. And I did bring up Ashton Kutcher as well and very many other celebrities. I'm pretty sure Chrissy Teigen is not black. Uh, she's Asian. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm right. completely confused, completely lost at what point you were trying to make there. I do think that you do tend to see things through the vein of race because yeah. when people are just making a sound point about he why does. it is that there is some interest in LeBron James' silence right now. And I think he should speak out because he had a friendship there and because he reports that he cares so much about black victimization and there was a long Long list of black victims. Right, Mark, I think it's very I mean, Mark, sound. You can disagree with it. Yeah. Okay, Candace, I, and Mark, and Mark, I, I agree I, with before you, you respond, Mark, Candace, Mark, I, I agree, Mark, I, I agree Mark, with the Mark, point that you're on, making, Candace. Mark. 
I want to ask you something. Go ahead. You've Go also, ahead, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you said that there wouldn't have been the attention on uh, the, the raid at Diddy's home, for example, if he'd been a white rapper, to which I would say, if that had been Eminem wow. at the height of his power... Say that power, again. Say that again. Say, 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 they, I didn't hear you. I believe you, you I believe you said before, uh, in a previous uh, debate or interview, that there wouldn't have been the same attention that was given to the raid on Diddy's home if it had been a white rapper, to which no, I would I say... say that. You didn't no, say I that? I didn't say that. I did not say that. What did no, you say so, about okay, that? You can, you can, you can disagree with you can disagree with that point too, but it's not, you wouldn't be disagreeing with me. Okay, but I, it, feel free to make your Eminem argument. So apparently, on the, on the documentary, that, well, just to clarify, on the documentary with TMZ, that's what I'm told is where you said that. It's hard for me to imagine that had this been many other celebrities, particularly white celebrities, that their children would have been in handcuffs and they would have been forced to stare down the barrel of, of guns and, and seen armored tanks. It, it just seemed like a lot for for a raid of a music producer. Wow. Right, I, I know the documentary you're referencing. I wish you would have watched wow. it with all due respect. Wow, what you are you going to say that. now? I'll tell you what I said. Yeah. What I did say was, not the attention. Diddy is an international superstar. Black, white, red, or yellow, we should be watching Diddy. Mm. And I, it, there's no reason why race is playing into the why of why we're watching it. That had, no, that had nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Um, what I'm talking about was the actual nature of the raid. Typically, unless you believe, and this is what I was arguing at the time, unless you believe that Diddy was an armed threat, there was no need to, to handle his children, who were not at the time, charged with anything in the way that they did. Uh. There was no reason to have SWAT, uh, uh, almost like the National the National Guard is full military infrastructure to do this. Um, I think they should, I'm not saying they shouldn't have raided the house. I'm not saying they shouldn't have arrested Diddy. I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying that what, what my comparison is, they wouldn't have done that to Mark Cuban. That's my point. But there's an, I, it, now as more evidence comes but, but out, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Mark, hang on. about Mark no, Cuban. On that point, you said they wouldn't have done it to Mark Cuban. Wow. Mark Cuban is a massive celebrity in America. If he had been doing what we now yeah. know from this charge sheet against P. Diddy, he's accused of doing, damn right they'd have done that to Mark Cuban. They would have. These are not like small. Done what? These are, these are not small allegations. Done what? He wouldn't have been. Have you read the charge sheet? Have you read the charge sheet against Diddy? You know what he's accused of. That, that's not what I'm disagreeing. Again, you're, you're, you're saying you're, you're saying, that, you're not, you're, you're saying you're the, you're, you're saying the nature of the raid would not have been as over the top if it had been Mark Cuban because he's a white guy, right? Is that what you said? That's what that's you what said. You said. I don't think it's quite that simple. I think the rapper wow, part of it has a lot to do with it. They might have done that to Eminem. That's what I'm saying. I, I, it's not purely racial. I'm saying. Well, what is the point you, you're but, making? But I, I don't really understand part, it. I promise you, just pro tip here, journalist to journalist, if you let me finish the sentence, you'll completely Always get what I'm saying. Always up for journalistic pro tip. He's What I'm saying is, is that with Diddy, as opposed to, say, Mark Cuban, just to use that example, there's an assumption that even if Mark Cuban is committing awful acts, or Harvey Weinstein, we don't need tanks. We don't need to tie his children up and make them sit outside because there's mm. no reason to believe that those children are going to do harm. There is a default assumption that... There, there's going to be a level the of children danger attached to Diddy that aren't right? even consistent with the, the charges. Again, he's a monster. Some right? of the but children are grown. Break into homes with tanks and machine guns for child molesters, even though child molesters are the worst people in the world. Well, because there's no many, reason to believe they're going to be pulled out with AR, AR 15s. It depends how many guns they think the person has, I would imagine. Candice, back to you. Most definitely. Yeah, so I just wanted to bring up a friend of mine, James O'Keefe, who got braided by the feds and had guns pointed at him over a diary, Ashley Biden's diary that he didn't even publish. He's a white guy, had nothing to do with anything um, and eventually was not found guilty. So this is the way that they act during raids. Regarding his children, oh. if you read the initial lawsuit with Lil Rod, uh, there was a very credible allegation, which Lil Rod made, that he was there the night that uh, Puffy's Puffy Diddy, whatever his name is today, that his son was involved in the shooting that was in the bathroom. So well, it's definitely. it was obviously really? um, yeah, understandable that they may involved. have thought, uh, given the allegations, that his son had something to do with it. His son was listed Allegedly. all throughout the lawsuit. Um, so when they were raiding them, they were probably also raiding the sons as well. That was my immediate assumption when I saw it. But I do think it's it's 
completely absurd to suggest that there was, was any sort of rapper or black motivation behind the raid. Uh, like I said, James O'Keefe is a perfect example when they did not have anything. Um, they had no reason to raid James O'Keefe in the manner that they did. And they did while he was in his boxers at like 3 a.m. in the morning and they put AR, uh, they, they put guns to his head. So I just completely okay. dispute that. Candace, on something just linked but separate, uh, you've just been with Kanye, uh, Ye, uh, over in, in Japan, I believe you saw him. Uh, and that happened at the same time that an 88-page lawsuit was filed against him, alleging that he drugged and raped an ex-assistant while at one of Sean Diddy Combs' parties. Uh, this came from an influencer and former <laughs> OnlyFans star, Lauren Pisciotta, uh, who's already sued him before. Wow. Uh, she claims that the rapper regularly had sex with employees, had a rotating list of guests at his Yeezy company offices and makeshift bedrooms, and so on. Um, What's your reaction to that? I mean, do you, is Ye potentially uh, another Diddy here? What are we looking at? Uh oh. So I actually didn't read the lawsuit because I just flew over from Tokyo yesterday. But it, were there videos and documentation of that, or is she just alleging that in a second lawsuit that she's filed? I'm asking seriously. Yeah, I mean, can, can I ask a question? Oh, sorry. Yeah, go on, Mark. Candace, and I mean this sincerely, if, if you read the lawsuit and it seems credible, uh, I know you wanted to go through the legal process, but would you denounce, would you denounce Kanye's mm -hmm. actions or the allegations against Kanye as well? If there wrong? were ever a lawsuit as thorough, and I want to be clear, I'm the woman who stood up against the Me Too movement. I am very much disagree with women dropping allegations absent any, any evidence and having their entire careers taken away, uh, men having their entire careers. As much as it pained me, I stood up for Matt Lauer because I thought that what happened to him was mm -hmm. wrong. The Diddy situation was completely different because the guy had pictures, photos, and documentation. Like I've, I've never seen an evidence. I've never seen so much evidence filed in a uh, lawsuit in my entire life. So I have not looked at this lawsuit. I don't wow. know if I would file this under the Me Too thing, where women just make allegations and then we're supposed to believe them. I don't believe in hashtag Believe Women. I'm very against that. I've been vocally against that movement from the very beginning. Um, did not believe Amber Heard uh, from the very beginning. So I would have to examine that particular lawsuit. But if any, if there was ever anything filed as strong as what was filed against Diddy, and mind you, Kanye was the one who used his platform to speak out against Diddy before it even became popular, I would, of course, be saying something about that because we're talking about an entire ring of abuse, drugs, uh, pink co cocaine. Again, these are allegations, but the pictures of the blood that he shot someone, I, I would be a complete hypocrite not to speak what? out and say, oh, well, he's my friend, so I'm totally okay if he's just shooting people in a bathroom and calling his friends to hide the evidence. I mean, this is, I would imagine we're comparing apple to oranges, but I'm ha happy to be educated on that lawsuit because I haven't actually read through it. And, and just, I mean, given you haven't read it, that's fair Ooh. enough. It, um, how is he? Yeah, I mean, when I last interviewed him, it was about a year ago, and he was pretty well all over the place. He'd been accused of making a number of anti-Semitic uh, comments, obviously. We all know about that. He's kind of disappeared off the radar a bit. Um, how is he? He looked great. I mean, he's lost so much weight. He looked happy and healthy. And he essentially said that he needed to get out of Los Angeles. And I completely sympathize with that because I do believe that it is a demonic town. The Hollywood has always, since its founding, been a town that was established by gangs. We are talking about MGM and Paramount and the origins of Hollywood. They were bootleggers that then became really? directors and the owners of companies. That's just the reality. And and so I do think what? it was healthy for him to get out of that climate and, and to move somewhere where you don't have paparazzi following you all the time. And, you know, he's working on an album just by himself. And I think that that isolation is good for him. I mean, Mark, yeah. should there be this forgive? A, uh, well, your response first. Uh, I, I was just a little taken aback by that, that, that exchange just now. I mean, I, uh, two things. One, on the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement doesn't argue and never has argued that we should uh, prosecute people without evidence or that women can make claims without evidence. Um, such an argument, wow. such an argument would presume that the woman's claim itself or the woman's experience itself does not count as evidence. If you're if you're if you're on a date and get sexually assaulted or you're in your bedroom and get sexually assaulted and you go to the police and say, hey, this thing happened to me, the police would take your statement and assess it and look for more evidence. 
but your initial claim itself is evidence. Your witness is evidence. To, but but if we say that women come forward, all they have is their story that they got raped, and that's not evidence. No, no, that's not it. Then no, that's no, no, Mark, Mark, I think you're misconstruing what Candice said, unless I'm wrong, and I share her view on this. This whole, you have to believe women, or men, by the way, who make allegations like this, I don't agree with that. I don't you know, agree every with part that. of my journalist. I don't agree with it either. You know, I, just, I, think I don't that agree was, with either. I, I think I, the I, real trouble, the real trouble but, with but, the but, Me Too. Well, hang on. There were lots of good things that came out of Me Too. The, the real flaw with it was taking that as the principle of everyone had to be believed, whatever they were saying. Um, because actually, what everyone should be in that position, they should be taken seriously. It should be properly investigated by proper authorities and justice uh, should be seen to be done. That is how these things should be handled. Nobody should just be automatically believed because that way is what so, led to a number of people getting cancelled left, right and centre when actually it turned out, in some cases, that they just did not deserve it. And Matt Lauer, I'd say, is a good example. Yeah, and I can't right. stand so, Matt Lauer, again, so it pains me to I use did, that I platform did, right. to I, 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 that I, was I, a ridiculous I think you're being, you're charge being very that was made against there. him. Mark. Yeah. I, I, did, I, did, I didn't misconstrue. I didn't misconstrue what Candace said. There's just a difference slightly between what she said and what you just said. I don't agree with either of you fully, but, but I think there's a thing that we all do share, which is people be lying sometimes, right? People right. All, sometimes don't tell the truth, and we, and we shouldn't assume that people are always telling the truth. The origins of Believe Women wasn't believe all women at all times in all places. It's, there, there are ways that that has become uh, the, the, the sort of almost caricature of the Me Too movement. But the idea here was that as a culture, really a rape culture, not just in the United States, but globally, we used to begin from a default assumption that women were lying. That when a woman said I was, I, she was raped, the first thing we'd say is, what were you wearing? What, did, you, did you drink? You know, are you dating them? Did you say yes? How many times? And, and our, our, our default position was of doubt and skepticism you know what I think, and rejection. You know what I and so believe women begins from a place of that. But I agree with you. Well, you shouldn't Some have people a, lie. You, know, men, you shouldn't like, have an men, instinctive, women, everybody else. Look, you shouldn't have an instinctive disbelief of people who make allegations either. Right? I don't believe you should fully believe or disbelieve anyone who makes claims. You take them seriously. That's what people want. And they also want to feel... I mean, look, I think the same in America... I think we're saying the same thing. Well, say, yeah, in the UK and America, the number of people uh, of convictions for rape, for example, in the UK is something like 2 or 3% of all cases that go to court end up with convictions. That's clearly ridiculous. So there are lots of flaws in this system, which uh, Me Too highlighted, which I agree with. But I think this idea that you automatically believe people or disbelieve them. Both of them are equally dangerous. Um, I want to just uh, bring in another guest and keep you two here for a moment. Um, it, it's Lord Jamar, who we interviewed recently about Diddy and who went viral this week for his comments on Kamala Harris, which I'll come to in a moment. But, Lord Jamar, first of all, you, you've been listening to this uh, debate we've been having. What is your view about where we are with this Diddy scandal? Uh, you know, uh, it's been quite a debate. Uh... You know, uh, I'm not surprised with everything that's going on with Diddy. I do feel his peers should speak out, black, white, or indifferent. Um, yeah, what he's done, what he's being accused of doing is reprehensible. And uh, yeah, we need to speak out about it. Everyone. Do you think he's coming out of prison or is that it for him? <sighs> I don't know. It looks bad for him. Yeah. You know, I don't know if he's... He doesn't seem like the type that would do well in prison, in my mind. And my, I don't um, think so. If he was really forced to have to do some time, I don't... Mm. I think he would just yeah. end it all. I don't think he can do six so months. You'd have to see what happens. Well, but. let me just move to, to the stuff that went viral with you, uh, Lord Jamal. This is your stuff about Kamala Harris, which, are you surprised about the amount of pickup that got? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but not really, because I think people are a little shocked that someone like me, you know, from a group brand Nubian that they feel is pro black. Why would I come out in support of uh, Donald Trump or go against a, a Kamala Harris who they are trying to put up as a black woman? Mm. And I don't see it. Well, let me let me I'm going to play the play the first of all, the Barack Obama clip. And then I'm going to play the clip that you said in response to it. Let's play the two. And you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. Because, because part of it 
makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for it. And now I want to play okay, the clip from Lord so Jamar. Talking in the about hood, what do we call what he just did to the men? We call that G checking. Right. You know, Meaning, what Obama you know, like, did, he was, I guess he, you know, he had a chip on his shoulder and thought that he could G check the yeah, black like men. Yeah, like he just had you know this authority just over the black people. You just aren't feeling right. a woman. Like, wow. And that's just not the case. It's, it's just a lot of things that go into it. Most definitely. Here we go, guys. I want to see his response. Well, I feel that she's so bad that guess what? I might just go f around and vote for Trump. And this is my first time saying this out loud. <laughs> but y'all <laughs> think you're going to shame somebody or bully a into voting for this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And Whoa. now I'm going to be, now you're going to make me be Mr. Anti. You keep coming at me with this bullshit. You keep coming at me talking about, oh, it's a shame that you're not supporting a black woman. <laughs> She's not black. Now, Mark, you know, let me ask you honestly, Mark, if it's been the other way around. Oh, wow. my goodness. It, hang on, Jamal, uh, Lord Jamal, I'll come to you in a sec. I, I just want to get their reaction wow. to what we've just played because it's gone viral, as I said. But Mark, you know, if it had been the other way around, if you had a former white president saying you've got to vote for Trump if you're white, you'd have gone absolutely nuts. Most so definitely. why is it OK for Barack Obama to order black people to vote for Kamala Harris? Most given definitely. Given how unpopular right. she currently is to the extent where Trump is ahead in five of the seven swing states. Yes. Why should they? So a couple of things. Uh, first, um, Here we go. no one should vote for anybody based on identity politics. You should never vote for somebody because so Obama's they're wrong. black. Right? I, yeah, Obama's wrong. I mean, it's, I, didn't, I didn't vote for him. I, I love not, that. Like, oh, Obama's wrong. Yeah, Obama's wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, we all agree. But I, but he I, got a fist in that. So, but no, we don't all agree, so, though, because I don't think, though... Oh, my God. I, I think Obama's wrong for several reasons in that, in that video. But Obama's not Defensive arguing about that you should vote for Kamala Harris because she's black. She, he's arguing you should vote for them because you're black. In other words, she best represents your interests. If I were running right, and if I, that's I, the I'm, same I'm a Green Party thing. member. That's what you're talking about. He brother. always he contradicts himself. I cannot with Mark. He was playing a skin Mark. color card. He was right. saying if I you are can't. black, you have a duty you vote for to vote for the yes. black candidate. Yes. You don't. L listen, listen, As Lord again, Jamal rightly again, said in his saying. furious rant about it, why, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, why hold on, should hold on, he be told what? who to vote for? Okay, first, first, first of all, Piers, again, you just said I'm bringing in the race card when the question you asked me was, should Obama be telling no, people to I vote said for Obama people because they're black? I said Obama played the race so card, not you. I said Obama did. Is he oh, okay? No, I, misheard you. I, apologize. Yeah. I apologize. I misheard you. My, I'm no, wrong. You heard right. him. It's so, Mark to the okay. Point, um, Mark is upset. Obama is saying that black people, again, I disagree with him, but let's, let's, let's disagree with him for the right reason. He's saying that as black people, vote your interest. Don't reject this person. As a black person, you should vote for the person that uplifts the black community. That's her. And don't let your patriarchy, don't let your, your hatred of women, don't let your this, your this, your this, make you not do it. My issue with it is it, it frames black people and black men in particular as pathological and people who act against their interests and acts as if black men don't also it's a historical black men actually do vote Democrat. I argue more than they should. So I, I think it's wrong for lots of reasons. I disagree with Jamar, though, my brother, calling her. And again, I heard a bleep. I, I'm, I've been I've been in the hood a long time. From that context, it sounded like you were calling her the B word. I couldn't see it, but I heard it. I'm not going to vote for that bleep. Sounded like the B word. I can't imagine a circumstance where we need to call her that. You know, in, in real life, and I mean, and, I and agree music, with and, that. And, 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 this is I agree. She doesn't deserve that. She was that. totally she disrespectful to be told to she does, her. She's not qualified to run a Dunkin' Donuts. Those types of comments, I think, are unnecessary, when even if you might agree that black people shouldn't be people. sheep. How does she disrespect you? By Ooh, he's G checking now. Me by giving me uh, word salads and all kind of nonsense, acting like she doesn't have to answer questions, being the artful dodger. That's very disrespectful. You think Very she called, uh, I'm sorry, so I don't agree with that. He shouldn't have called that. He, he took it way too now far. That's, 
that's disrespectful. Calling her a bee and all it, of it's, that. It's, it's just, it doesn't matter what color you are. It, right, doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter. your race. It does gender. not matter if you're a man, woman, that transgender. That is totally out of line. I do not agree we with that. We just need someone that can run the country. And whoever want to, you know, um, vote for that candidate, that's what that's just what it is. You got to respect that. Yeah. You might want to vote for Trump. I might want to vote for Kamala. We respect each other's votes. Most even definitely. though we're married in the same home. Yeah. But I respect that. If you say yes. that, I respect that. People got to... You know, respect votes. That's number one. Agree it, to disagree. Yeah. And it shouldn't be no pressure. It should be peaceful. Or all of this race cards. Black, white, this, that, this, that, and I'm third. I'm sick woman, of it. Does not matter. Who's going to be, you know, what candidate can run the country? I think it's disrespectful properly. to make black people feel like they are pressured. Yeah. To go against what they believe in their hearts because of their skin color. It's not right. It is very it is disrespectful. Right. You're basically saying right. the black vote doesn't count when you're saying you have to vote based on your skin color. Right. Obama is completely out of line for that. He was definitely he out of line. He owes the black community an apology. And the way that he came at black men was just wrong. Like you guys are like you guys aren't capable yeah. of making a sound decision. And you have to vote based on who he's telling you to exactly. vote for. Exactly. Like, no. Nah, because it don't, of it your don't, skin don't work color. like that. It does not work Very like that. Very disrespectful. Does not work like that. November the 5th, people go out, they get in their cars, they go to wherever they're going to vote, they go into the little booth, they put whoever, whoever they want to vote for, and that's it. And I think using those type of intimidation <laughs> tactics will backfire yeah. on Kamala's presidency. And he approved that what, message. What he approved, that that message will backfire. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Tim more minutes in this interview. Here we go. A, a B for that? Well, listen, first of all, the platform I was on was a different kind of platform. We was, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a much looser platform. It's more hip-hop orientated. And if she wants to get down, act like she's black, well... Mm. She is black, get, man. Oh, she is black. That's the other piece. I don't want to interrupt Candace. Black. I know Candace got stuff black. to say. She I want to hear Candace. Black. I'm sorry. Me, well, she is black. All, and, and you're being and you're being particularly hypocritical, bro. She's not bro, you've been real me, hypocritical. Let me, let me clear two things up. First of all, Pierce, you had a guest on named VJ or something that said I never voted or something like that. I don't know where he pulled that out his ass from, but yes, I have voted before. I actually voted for Obama uh, the first time around. I got caught in that nonsense. But um, also, that comment that you're showing me was not in response to what uh, Obama said. I said that prior to um, Obama coming out trying to be the father of, you know, black men and all this type right. of stuff. Right. But it was a good, it sounded like it went with it. It did, yeah. Um, but yeah, but in response, yeah, uh, listen, Barry, you're not our father, and we're not going to just, uh, you're not going to shake the black finger father. of condemnation at us and think that you're going to shame us uh, into doing what you want. We're not, you know, we're waking up as black people right yes, now, and up. we're thinking for ourselves, and wake we're not up. just going along with the Democratic Party. First of all, I'm a registered independent, so don't act all like right. I'm waving the Republican flag. But when it comes to leadership and all this type of thing, I don't see why we're trying to give this woman a promotion. She had one job, which was the border. She failed at that. They kept her in the background this whole time. I saw what they were going to do with her from the beginning. And I don't feel that she's the one. I'm sorry. And by the way, you are absolutely no boy. I know, Jamal, you are perfectly entitled. I want to bring in Candice, who's been waiting patiently. I mean, Candice, this whole sort of premise... Uh, and I, I, I'm glad you, Lord Jamal clarified he said that before Obama spoke, although his answer clearly would have been exactly the same. His response would have been the same because it's all part of the same thing, which is this sort of weird thing, which frankly is quite racist. Um, there's another way to look at it. Very if, racist. That you should judge according to your skin colour and racist. feel a duty, a, a mm. compulsion to do so, seems to me to be... Racist. It's very it's racist. racist. It, it is, is fundamentally racist. racist, and it's something. 
it's something that I think black people are right to be upset about. And then there's also this. You are correct to say that there is nothing about Kamala Harris or Barack Obama, for being frank, that is black. I covered this on my show yesterday, went through Barack Obama's history. There is something that is very cartoonish about them working to blackify a politician before they run for office. And what I mean by that is like Barry Sotoro, first eight years of his life, grew up in Indonesia. OK, then he was with his white mother and his Indonesian stepfather. He then went to Hawaii, which had a population of just 5000 black people. Eighty six percent of them were in the military and attended a school that is thirty one thousand wow. dollars per year. And it was all white wow. people. Why he was raised by his white grandparents, the Dunnans. He's never lied about hey. this, by the way. He then went off off to college and had a white dorm mate, dated a white woman. There's nothing about Barack Obama's history that gives him, in my in my viewpoint, like the stepping ground to be talking to the brothers about the black American experience. You ever Most even been definitely. to Hawaii? Like America. He has not Generally, been it feels like we took this country from the Asian country. Took this um, the state brothers. from the Asian country. And so when you realize that and you see how right before they run, suddenly the story changes. They drop a book and they work to blackify themselves. Obama didn't know his father, his Kenyan father growing up, and now all of a sudden he wants to lean into this stereotype. To me, it feels like they're both wearing blackface. I can't yes. sort through all of Kamala's Absolutely. various accents. There's so many of them. She's in front of a Latina crowd. Suddenly she's Selena, you know, and Absolutely. she's speaking wow. like a Latina. And then she's in front of a Jamaican crowd and she's dropping Mon. You know, I, I can't deal with it. It's, it is really? way too much Absolutely. Hollywood acting for me. Then she's got the black scent going and mm, mm, girl, what are you talking about? <laughs> she's in front of a white crowd. She's speaking like a California Valley girl. I don't. Trust it. Yeah, it. Yeah, I just do not trust somebody. They know. So quickly you guys so many know. personalities. There was nothing about her it's upbringing, sad. extraordinarily wealthy. Just she was sworn in Congress as an Indian American. Her mother wow. was Indian. She grew up with an Indian, Indian experience and American. was proud of that until she ran for office at, for president of the United States. And that is something that I am not comfortable with. I, I do not accept this narrative that she should be speaking about herself as a black woman. It's it's not OK. And I fully reject it. OK, um, Mark, Absolutely. I just want to play you a quick clip from Kamala Harris talking to Roland Martin, listing all the reasons Trump is dangerous. He, black know what to say. Just he is not looking out for folks when he is when he was a land lord and would not rent to black families sued for it when he took out a full page ad in the new york times against those five teenagers black and latino saying who were innocent yep. saying they should be executed the central park five when you look at he, the first black president of the United States, and he had birther And now you look at black immigrants, legal immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, and he gets on a debate stage and says they're eating their pets? Come on. This man is dangerous. And my question, Mark, is simply her this. If he's so dangerous to black You're people, right. why is it that his popularity is growing, particularly with black men, and Kamala Harris he is falling from where it was up. with Joe Biden, who was white. Well, I, I think part of it is because of the steady disinformation and misinformation campaign. Again, I am a critic of Kamala Harris. I'm literally watching her co-sign and underwrite as vice president and on the campaign trail a vicious genocide in Gaza. I ain't got no time to support or defend Kamala Harris on a lot of issues. Um, I think th there's a there's a very practical, pragmatic reason to vote for her, and, and that is to say, I don't want Donald Trump. And I think a lot of people are making that choice, but the people who are not are often being fed misinformation, including what's just been said by, 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 by my, my dear colleagues here and you, Piers, uh, and y'all, you, you cracking it up, but a lot of it is just not true. And, and, and I'm just gonna say it real fast. First, 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 um, the, I, I didn't say you said it, I said what they said. So first, the, the, the question of qualification, first, Jamar said, uh, again, she has she only had one job and it's the border. That's just not true, right? That's not the only... She was the, the border czar. Vice President's a lot to job. And now I was disagreeing was, with the claim that she had about. one job, not that she didn't have okay. that job. She was given specific Listen responsibility for the border. And yes. now everyone's rushing rushing to pretend she wasn't the same people who it, literally it, this, told this, her the border czar on you. liberal border shows I'm not disagreeing now with pretend that they didn't. Okay. What other public job right. did what I'm she saying have? Is, like they kept her in the background for a reason. For they a did, very we long knew time. nothing about who, this who, woman. Who, who, I never knew who she I was. I didn't even know how to pronounce who, her name. The to the, the third Senate. year. President pro temper of the Senate. Kamala Harris. Right. Who's the po domestic policy advisor? 
Kamala Harris. Who, I mean, I can, I can name 10 things that she does other than that, but I don't, want, I don't want to make it about that. My point is, is that there's lots of reasons to criticize Kamala Harris, but to frame her as unqualified. Okay. Again, no, that's is, a fair is point. She's not unqualified. She, she's, she, 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 she's, she's qualified. Okay. You just might think she's a, a, going to make the wrong choices. I, I, My I, next point, read. that Mark, she's not we've black. Got to, listen, we've the next point, that she's Guys, not... Guys, I'm motion. Guys, let me talk about I, her I need to... Now, Marco, her jump blackness. in. We've run out of her time. Candice has to go. is the biggest point. Let's okay. go on, make your big point quickly. I like Piz. Let's man. talk about her blackness, my, my please. Big, my, my, Let's talk my, about the black my, experience. Real quick. Two, two, just, two, two quick points. You're, you're quick, two, quick, Mark, quick, because Candice right, has to I'm, go. I'm the, 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 the blackness point is what's crazy here to me, right? First of all, the idea that she puts on, they're not personalities, they're, 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 they're codes, and black people code switch from place to place. Wait till you hear me talk to my accountant later. Wait till you hear me talk to my agent later, like, yo, why'd you put me on Pierce? Just kidding. Wait till I talk to the people at the local soul food spot. They wow. all gonna be different. Wait till I say peace to the gods and earth in yo, New York. It's gonna be a different Pierce? conversation. Black people talk differently. When someone says, that's my aunt, they're not lying because they don't have shared blood. Black people call people auntie. That's fictive all kinship. Right. That is blackness. Going to Howard is a black experience. Pledging AKA is a black experience. And lastly, Jamar, for somebody who is a five percenter who believes that, and I, I respect your belief, but to believe that the black man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, the father of the civilization, the god of the universe, who came from North America by himself from Saudi Arabia, you believe that person is black, but somebody who went to Howard ain't? Come on, bro. Okay, I'm going to leave the final man, word, final word to uh, Candice. <laughs> Candice, what's going to happen uh, on November the 5th? Well, since, under since three code weeks switching away. is normal, since code switching is normal in the black community, Piers, I'm going to speak to you like this because this would be totally normal if I put on a UK accent. And it's yeah, boy, I know where you get that from because you're married Thank to a Brit. Thank you so much. For, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Wow. I can't wait to run for president and just put on a different accent every time I speak to someone else. Wow. That's a perfect way to end it. Lord Jamal, Mark Lamont Hill, and Candace Owens, thank you all very much indeed. I appreciate it. Oh, man, that was fun. Oh, wow. That, uh, oh, my goodness. Amazing Woo! interview. That was Absolutely deep right amazing there. interview. Candace demolished Mark. Candace made him look Candace like a third grader. Candace demolished <laughs> Mark. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments section. Absolutely demolished him on each deep. and every topic. Yeah. I mean, he couldn't hold his composure. He couldn't stay calm. He he blew up. He got very he got angry. Upset. I mean, if you just go back and watch his facial expressions and yeah. his hand movements, I wow. would have been scared if they were in, you know, to get, you know, in, you know, in the same room right. doing this interview because, because it, it could have got like heated. He would have been very yeah. aggressive. It could have got heated. Yeah. But um, I must say that Candace had some right valid points. Yes. Yeah, so you know, every, every topic, time she spoke, I was like, okay, I can agree with this. Most definitely. Because it's like she like smooths it out. She honors it like on and out yes. and lets you see, you know, what she's saying. Yes. But um, far as Mark, man, pray for you, brother. That's all I can do, man. <laughs> he tried, you know, he tried I mean, his best. He was best, defending Kamala as well as, 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 as he can. The only thing I agree with Mark about with Mark was when he said Jamar shouldn't have called Kamala her, her bees and. You That's know, he took it to another level of yeah. disrespect. That's disrespectful. Even if you're on a hip hop platform. We That's have not to matter. respect yes. each other. Absolutely. No matter our color. Does not matter. No matter our race, gender. We have to learn how to respect each other and to yes. agree to disagree. And I just want people to just, to, you know, throw away the race card. Most definitely. Let's just say one is green and one is purple. You and know. we all know. Let's just see who can run the country better. That was Kamala's job. That was her That's job. That's what she was assigned to, border control. That was her post. And she failed. Yes. And everybody can clearly see Most that definitely. people are coming over committing crimes. And I know there will no be safety. lots of people who aren't going to vote at all. But I suggest you to vote. Do your research. Go out and vote, guys. You know, do your um, research and think about, do you want another four years of where we are now? Or, or do you want to see some changes? Or do you want to see some changes? I want to so. see some changes. I want to see some changes. I want to see some different you know, outcomes on different Most things definitely. that we're going through. And so, stop bullying people to vote yeah. their color. 
Obama? Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, grandpa going to tell the black men what to do. And like, then he on, had man. a nerve. I watched that <laughs> interview and, you know, he addressed those guys and was like, yeah, go hey. and tell Cousin Pookie. Go and like, tell Cousin Pookie. That's as if he insult. had a Cousin Pookie. And he's pointing the finger like, go and do it's it right now. very disrespectful. Like he's just talking to his children. I not think children. Obama owes the community, the black community. He need to clear that men up. Men in the black community because he addressed the men. He should I say. I think he owes black men black an men apology. Go out and vote for whoever you feel you need to vote for. But this is who I'm voting for. And that is it. And let people make their own uh, own opinion on this. Most their definitely. own vote. Most you know what I'm saying? We're not going to be bullied into what you want us to because do. Because think about it. If no. the shoe was on the other foot and that was Trump, yep. you know, yeah. saying, hey, white men. Oh, white men. And then black people would have had if something he, to say about that. Oh, oh my Lord. That, that's so racist. I'm, I'm not going for this, this, that, and yes, that. Yes, it's racist on, you know. It's bull crap. What Obama did was racist. Right. Wow. All right, guys, that was a great show right there. We appreciate you guys watching, kicking back, just relaxing. Um, we're just trying to get to the truth, you know. Yeah. We're just trying to, you know, just get to the meat and potatoes on this thing. Most definitely. And just stop messing around because we got less than three weeks. I always enjoy watching um, Them Candace Owens. Candace, oh, man. She's, She's on fire. Yeah. She always she goes in. breaks it down. She did not hold back. She has all the facts. Yes. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching a trial. She would be a good defense you know? lawyer. Yes, yeah, I feel like, like I'm yeah. watching a trial like a court case. Whenever because I hear Candace it always seems like she do her research. She gets the evidence. She yes. digs deep. Yes. And I absolutely and love And she can it. pass and she yes. brings up other things that happen and then she brings that up. She always has facts. Right. That's what I like about Candace. you know, show. her point of view. So. That's what I'm saying. All right, guys. Go ahead and smash that like button. Give this video a big fat thumbs up and get inside the comment section. Let us know what you think. All That's right. our time. We signing off. May God continue to bless everyone. Most Black definitely. or white does not matter. Yes, it doesn't Let's matter. Let's get this under control. Spread love. Please. Yes. The race card. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it as well. Yeah. We about it, guys. Y'all be safe. Peace. Peace.